Hello, welcome and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine video. Today is road trip day. I made a hover car and I'm going to show you how I did it. So the player controller and car, the car is a new pawn, but let's look at the player controller first. So the player controller has its inner own interface for with the as, with the as in first person. It has a component interaction manager along with our interact interface. Would you look at that? The, there's a slight difference between this interaction interface that you may have seen. We're actually going to send it the interacting component the interaction manager component here. We're actually gonna pass that in as a parameter. So what does this do? Well, this is the component that handles the line trace out into the world from your camera, right? And then it just runs the interact code. But this time it's running on both the actor and the hit component, and that's pretty much it. The most notable thing here to note, the trace channel, this is actually a variable here that we're gonna flip flop because we need two new ones, right? We're gonna need one for interactables and we're gonna need one for cars interiors. So the other function of this component is to hold our previously possessed pawn and how we're gonna do that is through this binding. This binding on pawn changed, on possessed pawn changed, will give us this function and this function, what we're gonna do is on the new pawn, we're gonna check to see, is it a car? If it is a car, we'll run this. If it's not a car, we'll just keep the trace channel interactable. So if it is a car, we'll save save the old pawn that we come that we get through here. We'll just save it. We'll then just snap and hide the character in game to the camera of the car, and that's all we're gonna do. So we know where the actor is at least, and then we'll reset the car interior, or we'll set the trace channel to car interior, and that's all that this manager is gonna do. The most notable thing here that it ha holds is the first person character and the previously possessed pawn, and then it changes to trace da trace channel based on whatever new pawn we possess. That is the high level overview of what that component is doing, and that just goes right on our player controller. So the car here, car here has its own, its own interface as we saw here. The car here is its own pawn. It has a handful of scene components here as categories for our parts. We have accessories that has like spare tires, flags, things like that. We've got lights which are like the headlights. We've got the doors, which are custom. Here they're custom scene, uh, scene and custom static mesh components that we're actually gonna that mm, add some logic. The dashboard has our starter and steering wheel, so our starter and steering wheel. Camera, we saw that. The engines, there's front, rear, and then there's two for each. These are also custom. The most notable thing to make note about this car body is that it is simulating physics, and that is how we're getting away with like impulses and stuff. So that's the, this is what the current collision for the physics body looks like the it has to be interactable because we're interacting with it but we're not going to be interacting with along the car interior compared to like something on along the dashboard which is a starter which has no collision or it has custom collision but it's basically overlap everything block the car interior and ignore the interactable and that's how we would do interior stuff the, the things like doors same thing overlap but we're going to be on the car interior and the interactable the lights they don't do anything for now the only other thing that does something is the steering wheel and we'll see that here alongside the hover engines which are also custom custom static mesh components <clears throat> so the car parts the car parts the starter the starter here is just a simple that's the simple cube we saw on the dashboard right so on the begin play we'll just cache some cache some variables here about the car this also implements the interact interface so on the interact we'll, we'll do a flip-flop on the is on and this is on is using a rep is set to rep notify, which then allows us to use this function that it generates to do a event dispatcher call so we can bind to it on other components. And then the rest of this is just standard look look and movement from the characters, but the look is the only thing that's the same. The movement is a little slightly different in that it's doing impulse impulses to push the car along. It's also doing an impulse and adding some rotation to calculate what what way the car is facing. So this is this is the math behind it. It's kind of what I came up with. So we got like a multiplier here. We got a handful of multipliers here and then some multipliers here. And then we make that rotation. And that's how we get like a nice smooth like hovercrafts rotation. The hover engines here are the other notable exception or notable thing too, because on the start, it's going to grab that starter component class here. It's going to grab the starter component class bind to the is on. And then this is how we're going to start the engine. So we either start the engines and start hovering here or we'll stop. So when we start, what we're going to do is on the start of the hovering, we will scale our force to our max using a step for time. Then we'll go ahead and we'll cache some variables about the car. And then we'll just do a simple line trace. Well, yeah, the car and the, and the component. We'll do a simple line trace from the component down from whatever the opposite of the car's up vector is. Oh, and whatever this, and then whatever this distance is. So that's the line trace here. We got various variables and things like that. The 
When we get a hit, we'll spawn this hover dust effect, this Niagara effect, and then we'll do some calculations to determine how far, how like how springy or how much how much the impulse gets hit at the location of the component. And this is just doing a very simple like um, how do you explain it? Like a exponentially powerful impulse. The closer the car gets to the ground, closer the car gets to the ground. That's what this is going to do. So that gives us our nice like little hover effect. The steering wheel. The steering wheel here is just doing a it's just doing a small timer and all this is doing is just setting its own rotation according to the rotation of the car. So it's not really actually being rotated, it's just it has the illusion it's being rotated. Uh, it is our it's very arcadey. So the door, the door implements the interact interface, right? The interact interface which has our interacting which has our manager class. We can grab the player controller out of that. We can grab our previous pawn. We can then just repossess our previous pawn. We'll add an offset to that pawn so it, we act as if we're getting out of the car. We'll re-enable collision. And then if it's a character here off the end, we'll check to see if there's a character movement class. If there's a character movement component class, we'll just set it to falling. That's it. Now, the other notable thing here about the car is that the collision, right? The collision on the core, the top one is a physics body, but the collision on basically everything else is only set to base to use these trace channels really. And then it's overlap all. Because if you had this like blocking things, like this door like blocking things, you'd get some really weird physics. You get some really weird physics. And that's pretty much it. So now when we hop into the car, basically when we hop into the car, it will possess, will possess the car, will attach our character to the camera here. And now we are in the car. Our trace channel has changed. So now we can hit this button and we are floating. And we can fly forward, fly backwards, and we've got that little nice Niagara effect that I made here. So it looks like there's like smoke on the bottom. And then if we were to, we can turn it off. We can turn it back on. We can get out while it's on and it's still on, still hovering here. We can get back into it. We can turn it off. We can get out this side if we wanted to. And then we can get back into it. We can hover it up and then just fly around. But yes, this. This is basically how you would just do a simple like hover car and let's go and take on adventure, shall we? All right, all right, all right. Are you guys ready for an adventure? Let's go fire up. I've got this noise map. I added a sandy texture. Noisy map and they're like, oh, this looks so cool. Let's go. Oh, if I if I also hit, let's see, if I hit F, ooh, nice bumpy there. It is, oh, we get to see the first bug. We're kind of just flying. Oh, he crashed. <laughs> Didn't stick the landing. Shall we go again? Oh, there we are. Fire up. So if I was to press forward, Unreal Engine does, ooh, oh, and we, we tipped over. <laughs> I was turning too far. To, I was turning to one side too long, and I ended up flipping over because of the terrain. That's funny. That's hilarious. But yeah, if I was to press forward and to press F8 at the same time, it will lock my key forward. So now we can watch it go. Mad Max, anybody? You getting Mad Max vibes? I'm just going to do some camera work. Oh, nice jump. Stuck the landing. Let's go. Let's go, car. You go. Ooh, big jump, big jump. Into the ether. All right. That was a good one. Let's take it for another spin. Um, I'll take it for a spin in first person. God, I should have added a reticle. <laughs> can't see what the line traces are. Yeah. All right. I mean, there's still some bugs with the gravity and things like that because the impulses can override gravity and you just end up getting like a flying car. But I guess I guess that's fine. I mean, if you want a flying car, go for it. You physics based flying car, I guess, where you just impulse impulse, <laughs> impulse the static me impulse the mesh to the space. Yeah, whatever. It's your game, man. You do whatever you want. 
Let's uh let's watch it in the cinematic cam though some more because that was fun. Well, I don't know if it's a cinematic cam. It's more like a spectator cam. Ooh, ooh, ricocheted hard off that one. Are you gonna land it? You gonna land it? Ooh, ooh, save, nice. Oh, crashed. All right, all right, all right. Let's go in a. Let's find a different direction. See if we can get another good one of those. That's that was fun. Oh, look at this, a hill. I'm gonna go over this hill. Yeah, maybe there's some calculations for if you're falling. You're like a certain a certain amount above the ground would probably be where you just run off the force. Let's see. Ooh. Underside. Ooh, close up. Jump. 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 Ooh. And this is fun because it's basically just take the the car is just going wherever it wants because that's that's just it's going wherever it wants it's disappearing on me <laughs> oh oh it's okay well it's it's too busy going flying all right fine whatever <laughs> oh god this thing's so funny let's uh I'm gonna hit this hill I'm gonna go and hit this hill. You know, we need, like, maybe, like, a snowy scene. Yo, let's swap this out for some snow, shall we? All right, all right. Who's ready to go for a snowy adventure? I have swapped over the particles to a more bluish color. I have added some snow to the train, and I imported Ultra Dynamic Sky so I can get the nice snow effect. And we're going... We're going driving through the snow, baby. <laughs> Oh man, flipped. It doesn't look. It doesn't look nearly as good because I'm. Why is I have the particles selected? There we go, brother. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, let's try it again. I'm gonna do it more in first person because honestly, I think this one looks better in first person. We'll go a little bit slower so we can like go over the hills and nice. Chilly. I should have installed a heater. We don't have a heater. Wee. Oh, this is really fun. Where's the exit? We need to get out of here. Very chilly. Very fun. Let me try it. All right, I'm going to try one last, and then we're going to head out here. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, big jump. Big jump. Nice. Big jump. Woo. And into the ether he goes. Woo. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.